Freedom Motak, the commentator of this evening. In today's first reading, the book of Job confronts the problem of human suffering. Suffering was thought to be a punishment from God, but in today's gospel, Jesus shows us the face of God in the midst of human suffering. The psalmist teaches us that the Lord is one who heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. So we can come before God with confidence, with our pains and sorrows, and trust that God, too, will heal us. Our presider for this Mass is Father Philistine. Please stand and let us begin. We begin this Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, before we continue with this Mass, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heed the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relies solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on, and I am filled with the restless, restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, 
and they come to an end without hope. Remember that in my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response? Praise the Lord, all who heal the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praise to our God for he is gracious. It is fitting, fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. The dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars he calls each by name. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. <clears throat> Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly, the wicked he casts to the ground. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? that when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother in law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached grasped her hand and helped her up. Then the fever left her and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him, they said, Everyone is looking for him, for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogue, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
My dear friends in Christ, a couple of years ago, before the pandemic, when I was still working as a parochial vicar at St. Brendan of the Hill, after Mass on one of the Sundays, you know, normally before, after Sunday Mass, the priest stands at the entrance of the door and greets spirit parishioners as they leave the church. So why I stood there greeting parishioners, a man and his wife and their son, they walked up to me. The man grabbed my hand. He looked into my face and he said, Father, you touched and healed me today. At first, I was embarrassed. I was a little embarrassed. And I asked him, what did I do to you? As I waited for him to respond, I noticed that the three of them, the husband, the wife, and the son, they were in tears, they were crying. And the man said to me, Father, for 27 years, I have never been touched by any preaching. Father, you transform my life today. At that point, I now say to him, I was not the one that touched and healed you, it was Jesus. The three of them nodded their head in unison and they said, yes but Jesus used you to do it. I said, of course, Jesus uses us, his instruments, to reach the hearts of people. And then I said to him, yeah, a lot of people have been touched and healed after listening to preaching from a priest. I gave him an example of St. Augustine. St. Augustine got converted after he listened to the preaching of St. Ambrose. So I then encouraged this couple, I prayed for them, and then they left joyfully. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus is still touching and healing people today. What he did in the days of the apostles, he continues to do in our own time. Because if you read the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 13, the book of Daniel says, Jesus is the ancient of days. If you read Revelation chapter 22, verse 13, Jesus is the beginning and the end. If you read the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus is the same today, the same yesterday, and the same forever. Our first reading today from the book of Job presents us with the problems or the calamity of an innocent and faithful servant of God. But let us not dwell on the suffering of Job because God allowed Job to be tested by the devil to see how strong his faith was. Let us rather focus our hope and our belief in the power of God. Job's faith was severely tested by the devil. He lost all legitimate wealth he lost his children, he lost his friends, he was inflicted with leprosy, even his own wife divorced him because of the pain. But Job as a man, he complained and he said, lying in my bed, I wonder when it will be day. Rising, I think how slowly even it comes. I remember that my life is but a breath and that my eyes will never see joy. So the lamentations of Job were as a result of his human feeling. But in spite of all the losses he experienced, Job did not lose his faith in the saving power of God. My dear friends, the case of Job reminds all of us of our daily struggles, both physical and spiritual struggles, especially when we have problems like sickness, the coronavirus disease, when we have, when we experience hardships, when we experience rejection, when we experience racial discrimination, when we experience betrayal from our family and friends. Above all, the story of Job reminds us of what it's what seems to us as the grave silence or absence of God 
or the dark nights of our lives. These are terrible moments when we confront God with a question or question like, God, where are you? Sometimes when we are faced with challenges, we ask God, God, where are you? Why are you allowing us to suffer? Why do you allow us to have this pain? At the beginning of the pandemic, towards the month of July, there was a lot of conversation, people asking, where is God? Why would God allow us to suffer? Why would God allow the churches to be closed? You know, because at that time, we were not even allowed to have outdoor masses. And somebody had a conversation with, with the Pope, and the Pope gave this story. He said to him that the devil was bragging at the beginning of the pandemic, and the devil said to Jesus, you claim to be the Son of God, but I have closed down all your churches in the whole world. Jesus responded to the devil and said, No, you have not closed my churches. You have closed the buildings. But you have established, I have been able to establish more churches in family homes. Because at that time, you know, we were only participating in our masses via online. Families were becoming closer. They were living more in unity. They were praying more because they were locked indoors. So the experience of Job in our first reading is the kind of experiences when we have, we ask the question, God, where are you? God, why me? God, why are you allowing this to happen? But God does not abandon us. Because even Jesus Christ, when he hung on the cross, at a point in time, he cried and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Son of God, he lamented because he was hanging on the cross as a man. But God did not abandon him. And that is why, after three days of his death, he rose from the dead. Job, when Job did not lose his faith, God restored him and gave him everything. Job has told us that he knows that his Redeemer lives. So even if he goes through problems, whatever challenges, he would not lose faith. And that is why the psalm in Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So whatever you go through, whatever pain you face, whatever challenges you have, weeping may come in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Even the pandemic is going to come to an end. It's not going to be forever. So Job's story is the experiences we have in our lives. God will not fail us because he says in the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, he says, I am Yahweh who heals you. So when you trust God, when you put your hope in him, he will never disappoint you. In our second reading of today, Paul expressed his willingness to preach the gospel. You know, Paul was a persecutor of Christians. But after encountering Jesus, he changed and became an apostle of Christ. Paul used the energy he used in persecuting the church in preaching the gospel. And that is why he said today, Cause upon me if I do not preach the gospel. Like St. Paul, my dear friends, we have experienced pain, but when we experience the love of God, we should tell the world about the love of God. And how can you do that? It's your constant communication with God, your good relationship with your family members, your good relationship with your neighbors, the way you relate with them, will tell how you have received the message from Christ. In our gospel passage of today, we are told that Jesus went to the, in, to the mother-in-law's house of Simon. And when he got there, he was told that the woman was down with fever. Jesus went in, grasped her by the hand, and the fever left her. 
After that, the Bible tells us that immediately she was well, she began to wait on them. So Jesus cured this woman of her fever. She, in turn, cured Jesus' apostles of their hunger. What is this for us today? That God expects you to show love to your fellow man when he blesses you. The very fact that we are seated here today is not because we are perfect, it's not because we are righteous, it's simply because God has had pity on us. So Jesus today, after curing the mother-in-law of Peter, she got up and waited on them. Some of us, when we face challenges like Job, for example, we remember God. We ask God, why me? God, why this? God, why that? But when God takes control of us, we forget God. So today, the story of Job is a practical reminder to us that we should not lose faith even when we face challenges. Jesus says, difficulties and challenges are definitely going to come. But a person that keeps faith, that is hopeful, that does not lose faith, is the person that will receive the blessings from God. There are certain times you become frustrated. You ask God, God, what is happening? Why did you allow my son to die? Why did you allow my, my, my daughter to die? Why did you allow my uncle to contract the virus and die? We ask so many questions. But when God takes control, we forget God. A lot of people know God when the going is bad. But when the going is good, they forget God. And that is why today, the mother-in-law of Peter is a good example for us. Not to forget God, even in our good and bad times. She waited on the apostles because she was well enough to provide food. This is important, my dear friends, because if Jesus hears you, we too must have faith in him. If the good news must liberate us, we must have faith in Christ. The power of Jesus is still the same today, and he is ready to heal those who come to him in faith. Like my friend in the story that was touched by Jesus, I encouraged him and his family to keep up with their faith of coming to church and believing in God. Let us all, even in this pandemic, let us not lose faith in God. Let us not look at the challenges we are facing and say God has abandoned us. God has not abandoned us. God is still with us. We pray today that God would help us to believe in him, to trust in him, and never to lose faith even when we are troubled. May the good Lord bless his words in our hearts. Amen. Let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Son our Lord. I believe in the whole in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Church and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, let us bring our prayers and petitions to God today. Like the psalmist reminds us that the Lord is good and sustains the lonely. With confidence, let us present to Him our petitions. For ourselves and all Christians, that we may imitate Christ and help alleviate those who are suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and party leaders, that they may work together to help those suffering amidst the pandemic and heal the division in our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the containment of the coronavirus, even as it becomes more infectious, 
for the healing of those who are sick and that the vaccine may be widely available soon to everyone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the scouting program, that our scouts may grow and flourish to become leaders with good character, and that God may bless all the adult volunteers who create the safe environment for them to grow in. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are sick, we remember Kelly Trundle, Diane and Cardi Torres, Al Alioto, Maddie Croy, Carlos Briannis, Ronnie Grando, and all affected by the coronavirus, that the good Lord may bring them complete healing and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, we remember Paul Dasher, Monsignor Mickey McCormick, Richard Salmon, and those who have died by violence and the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. This Mass is being offered for the eternal repose of Evelyn Rule. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, you heal the broken hearted and bind up our wounds. Hear our prayers once again as we present them to you with faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 brothers and my sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will live and move and have our being. A while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as a joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift to pray by sending down your spirit upon them that is due for us, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave it thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we be married to the co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of heaven, Lord, you are your Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters and my brothers, look, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are all of us who are invited to the supper of the Lord. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice grant us we pray so to live that made one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen. let us listen to a few announcements our second collection this Sunday is for the school earthquake retrofit fund as always, thank you for your generosity. We have begun to plan for Lent. Please visit our parish website or Facebook page to see those upcoming activities that will be held via Zoom, from yoga for seniors 
to anti-racism, social justice, reflections and discussion, to faith sharing book club, to caring for the environment, Pope Francis, ex, ex, excuse me. Thank you, Father. And stations of the cross. <laughs> that was a tough word, I'm sorry. And see our flyers posted online for more information and registration. And thank you for joining us for Mass today. We wish you all a safe and blessed week. Thank you so. <laughs> the work is called Laudato Si. It's a document the Pope wrote on the care for the environment. So there's going to be a discussion on that during the period of Lent. So when you look at the website or the Facebook page, you will see the activities we have for the period of Lent. And we want to have these activities in combination with Holy Name Parish. So those from Holy Name can also log on to the Zoom link and participate in the various activities. So we have the Faith Sharing Book Club, Lauda to See. We're also going to have a Fatalité Tutti. I'm also getting difficult pronunciation <laughs> now. So there are documents the Pope has written. And then we're also going to have an anti-racism and social justice discussion. So just look at the website and see the activities you can participate in. And we're also going to have chair yoga for seniors. We have the preschool director in a holy name. He's a specialist in yoga. Just is going to be doing Zoom yoga with seniors. So just look at the website and you will participate in the events. Thank you to all of you for attending Mass today. Thank you, sister, and all those who have made this Mass possible. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a great weekend, everybody. You too, Father. Thank you.